In this module, we will start a new project called Working Controller Topping, or WC Topping for short. We will add a local library containing needed parts and be placing components both from that library and directly out of the Altium Content Vault. The design that we will be capturing is a daughter board providing additional I.O. capacities. Looking at the block diagram, we can see that it adds CAN bus, digital I.O.s, and 12-volt relay support to a Raspberry Pi 3 board. We will use the Pi's 40-pin GPIO connector as our interface. Just a quick disclaimer, this is more of a training design with emphasis on design capture and has not yet been verified. So let's start a new project called WC Topping. We will add four new schematics, processor interface, digital I.O., relay I.O., and CAN interface. We will need some components that are not in the standard integrated libraries as we mentioned earlier, so we will add an integrated library that contains them. Oftentimes, a company will have a set of custom libraries with approved parts, and this is how you would add them to your Altium library for selection. Start by going to the Library panel and opening it. Click on the Libraries button, and under the Install tab, click on Install. Integrated libraries are very portable and are one good option for storing and sharing components. The integrated library we are looking for is called wct.intlib and it's found under our Example Projects folder. Installing it will provide most of the needed components. Now that we have our additional library installed, we can begin to capture our design. Earlier we talked about setting grids to aid in placement, so let's do that now, setting the grid for the schematics to 200 mil. Using a larger grid for initial placement ensures room for wiring and provides a cleaner looking schematic. Please feel free to try various grid sizes to determine what works for you. Click on the library panel to open it and then select the miscellaneous connectors library. This is a standard installed library that comes with the tool. Scroll down the list to find the 40 pin I.O. connector here. And to place this component, after you've selected it, click on place. And before you click on the schematic page, hit the tab key to open up the components properties window. Looking at the properties window, we see the schematic symbol and footprint associated with this component. A component from an integrated library will always contain both, enabling it to be placed in the schematic design and then onto the PCB. In the property window, we see the source libraries for the components symbol and footprint. One thing we want to do here is change the reference designator now by clicking on it in the Properties window and entering J1. Close the window by clicking OK and proceed to place this connector using the mouse to drag in place by clicking on the page. Altium will continue in the placement mode until we hit the Escape key or the right mouse click to exit placement mode. While still in placement mode, we can add more of the same component by multiple clicks, like so. Notice that the J1 is auto-incremented. This can be very handy when placing multiple copies of the same components, auto-incrementing the reference designators along the way. The orientation of the component comes from the library symbol, and we can change it on the fly, as it were, while it's still attached to the mouse. To rotate it counterclockwise by 90 degrees, hit the spacebar. You can continue hitting the spacebar to get the desired rotation angle. To rotate in the clockwise direction by 90 degrees, hold the shift key down and then tap the spacebar. There are two other orientation operations available to us as well in the schematics. We can flip the schematic symbol along its X or its Y axis. So, with another connector ready to be placed, hit the X key to flip it along its X axis, like so. Otherwise, hitting the Y key will flip it along the Y axis like this. This feature is useful for arranging the components in a logical way to facilitate connections on the schematics. I must warn you that this flipping should only be done on components in the schematics and never in the PCB, as that could cause what I call PCB coasters to be created. Footprints generally fail if they are flipped using X or Y, and Altium Designer will warn you if you try, but it still will allow you to do so. Rotation is the only safe operation to perform. And flipping a footprint would most likely result in a PCB that cannot work as intended. While there are some exceptions, it's a good rule to just say no to flipping footprints. We only need one of the many place connectors, so let's get rid of the extras. Selecting the extra connectors for deleting it is straightforward. In Altium Designer 17, there are two selection modes possible. They are Select Only What is Fully Enclosed by the Drawn Rectangle, 
and select all that is in or is touching the draw rectangle. These are new to Altium Designer 17 and are very handy. To select only elements fully contained by the rectangle, sweep from left to right, like this. To select all elements in or touched by the rectangle, sweep from right to left, like this. Now we see the difference in selection. You may also have noticed the difference in the color of the rectangle as well, and this indicates which selection mode you are in. By the way, it does not matter if you start drawing the rectangle from high to low or low to high. What really matters is whether you are going from right to left or left to right. That motion is what determines the selection mode. Once the connectors are selected, hit the delete key, and they're gone. Simple as that. One more useful tool feature is the undo and redo. There are icons for this at the top of the window. We could hit the undo and redo as needed, backing up or re-executing our steps. There are short keys for this as well. The typical control Z for undo, which in this case would restore the deleted components, and control Y for redo to delete them again. I normally use the control keys to get out of trouble, but the icons work as well. Whatever works for you. We will pull a 100 nanofarad capacitor out of the WTC library and add it to this schematic as well. To find it in the library, we use the searching function in the window, selecting WCT library and start to enter CAP shows us the list of components that match this string. Here we see all the caps in the library. Select the 100 nanofarad 0603 size and place the cap calling it C1. We will also place another cap for the 3 volt as well. This completes the components needed for the processor interface. Save it and let's move on to the Relay I.O. schematic to continue adding components. We will wire up the design in another module. Open the Relay I.O. schematic. We will now add the NMOS devices for the low side switching of the 12 volt external relay loads. To add it, we go to the Library tab, then WCT Library, and start typing NTHD to search for and pull up the dual NMOS device. There is a plus sign in this component, indicating that it is a multi-symbol component. Clicking on the plus sign expands the list, showing that there are two parts to this particular component, part A and B. We can pick whichever half of the component we need, so for now we will start with A. Hit Place to start the placement, hit the Tab key to assign the reference designator, and then place it on the schematic. Now the mouse has the next part, part B of the component. We will place that as well. We will add a level shifter needed between the 3.3 volt IOs from the Raspberry Pi and the low side NMOS drivers later. This is a basic example of how you would place a multi-part component. Typically you would have a multi-part component for the larger pin count BGA devices such as microprocessors. I will go ahead and place the indicator LEDs and the needed resistors and then the back EMF protection diodes for each relay channel. All that's left is to add the two pin connections, and now we are finished with the placement and entering of components. Let's save it and move on. Opening up the CAN interface sheet next, we encounter a typical design issue. This schematic requires devices that are not in the standard installed libraries or the custom WCT library. We want to use the MCP2515 and the MCP2551 ICs for the CAN bus interface could create their schematic symbols and footprints, but why would we reinvent the wheel? Let's use a handy source for pre-made components, the Altium Content Vault. To access this resource, you must have a valid Altium Live account and be on current subscription. So let's add the Altium Content Vault to our preferences. Click on the DXP pull-down menu and select Preferences, then Data Management folder, and then Vaults. Click on the Add Altium Content Vault, and if prompted, sign in. And we can close the preferences window now that we've got this set up. Now we can access the hundreds of thousands of components in the Altium Content Vault with symbols and footprints. To access the Altium Content Vault, click on DXP and select Vault Explorer. While we're waiting for the connection to be made and once we're ready, we can search for the microchip devices. Type MCP2515 and then Carriage Return. Here you'll see our options, and selecting it we can right-click on it and hit Place. Note you must have a schematic page open for place to be enabled, otherwise it will not allow you to do that. So let's do the same search again. In this case, we will now look for the MCP2551 
and we'll place that as well. Again, remember hitting the tab and assigning a nice reference designator prior to clicking on the schematics. Or if you accidentally already clicked and placed that component, you can double click on the component to bring up its properties window and change it there. Let's open up the MCP2551 properties window and notice that there is a link to the Vault component section instead of the normal library. The graphical section can be modified to rotate the part as well. Normally I don't do it from within this window, but you could. Let's click OK and close the window. We will continue to place components onto the schematic either from the Altium Content Vault, such as the level shifter I see that we needed for the relays, or other components from the local libraries. There is also one other approach that I often use in capturing design, and that is reusing an existing schematic. We will copy an existing power supply schematic file into the local project directory, and then we'll add this local copy to the project. Once the file is local, and this is really important, having a local copy so that any changes that we make will not affect the original project that that file was associated with. To add it to the project, simply right click on the project file, and select Add Existing to Project. Then select the local schematic copy, and it becomes part of the project. This is very handy for especially things like power supplies, where you reuse the same design over and over again. In this module, we covered the basics for placing components into the schematics from various installed libraries as well as from the Altium Content Vault. We also talked about changing their orientation and flipping in the X and the Y. In our next module, we will focus on wiring up these components.